What did Jesus say about Christmas? What did Jesus say about Christmas? The Christmas experience. The perfect Christmas tree is bought. Adorned with ornaments and glittering with tinsel, it stands by the window. The stores are crammed with shoppers hunting for presents and the little ones anxiously waiting for Santa. Busy with Christmas fever, wonder did you ever, did the Bible or Jesus made any injunction on Christmas ever? Ponder upon the following analysis on Christmas, and the truth will become clearer and clearer. Does Christmas have biblical evidence? The word Christmas does not exist in the Bible. The Bible has closed lips on the entire feast of Christmas, with one exception, the decoration of a tree. The Bible itself criticizes the decoration of the Christmas trees. The customs of the people are worthless, they cut a tree out of the forest, and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel, they adore it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so it will not totter, Jeremiah 10-3-4. European pre-Christian pagans superstitiously believed that the green trees had special protective powers. In fact the use of the Christmas tree began only in the 17th century in Strasbourg, France and from there it spread to Germany, Britain. Tree worship was a common feature of religion among the Teutonic and Scandinavian peoples of Northern Europe before their conversion to Christianity. German settlers brought the Christmas tree custom to the American colonies in the 17th century. By the 19th century its use was quite widespread. Compton's Encyclopedia, 1998 edition Was Jesus born on December 25th? Neither the date December 25th nor any other date on Jesus' birth is mentioned in the Bible. It was not until the year 530 CE that a monk, Dionysus Exodus, fixed the date of Jesus' birth on December 25th. He wrongly dated the birth of Christ according to the Roman system, i.e., 754 years after the founding of Rome, as December 25th, 753. Encyclopedia Britannica, 1998 edition. This date was chosen in keeping with the holidays already indoctrinated into pagans' beliefs. Roman pagans celebrated December 25th as the birth of their god of light, Mitra. In the 2nd century AD, it, Mithraism, was more general in the Roman Empire than Christianity, to which it bore many similarities, the Concise Columbia Encyclopedia, 1995 ed. Other pagan gods born on December 25th are, Hercules the son of Zeus, Greeks, Bacchus, god of wine, Romans, Adonis, god of Greeks, and god frere of Greek-Roman pagans. What about Santa Claus? If aliens descended on Earth during the Christmas season, they would undoubtedly believe Christmas as being Santa's birthday. The words Santa Claus appear nowhere in the Bible. However, Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus, was a real person, a bishop, who was born 300 years after Jesus. According to legend, he was extremely kind and set out at night to bring presents to the needy. After his death on 6th of Dec, schoolboys in Europe began celebrating a feast day each year. Queen Victoria later changed the celebration date from December 6th to December 24th Eve. Did Jesus or his companions celebrate Christmas? If Jesus meant his followers to celebrate Christmas, he would have practiced it himself and enjoined it on his followers. There is no mention in the entire Bible that any of his followers ever celebrated Jesus' birthday like Christians do today. The Church did not observe a festival for the celebration of the event of Christmas until the 4th century, Grolier's Encyclopedia. Thus we see that neither the Bible nor Jesus and his companions say anything about the celebration of Christmas which currently involves fanfare, commercialization, and extravagant spending. Devoid of any spiritual relevance. We'll now analyze the real person of Jesus, peace be upon him, in the light of the Bible and Islam. What did Jesus say about himself? In many places in the Bible, Jesus, referring to himself as a prophet said, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house, Matthew 13 verse 57. Nevertheless I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet persists out of Jerusalem. Luke 13 verse 33 Jesus received God's revelation. Similarly, Jesus Christ too, as a prophet, received revelations from God, but now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I heard of God, John 8 verse 40. Jesus prayed to his God. And when he, Jesus, had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, Matthew 14 verse 23. 
Obvious question, if Jesus was God, who is he praying to? Jesus put himself equal to other humans. Jesus put himself equal to other humans in the eyes of God. My Father and your Father, my God and your God, John 20 verse 17. God does not have a God, but Jesus had a God. Moreover, the Gospel writers referred to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as the Son of Man about 85 times in the Gospels, and never once did he explicitly call himself God, or God the Son, or the begotten Son of God. Jesus preached God's oneness. Jesus Christ, as a true prophet of God, taught monotheism. When asked, what is the first of all commandments, Jesus replied, The first of all the commandments is, Hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, Mark 12 verse 29. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent, John 17 verse 3. Prophets of God God, by His mercy, sent numerous prophets throughout history to all nations as guides and role models. Some of the prophets were Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Jesus, and the last prophet Muhammad, peace be on all of them. They all came with the same basic message, which is the oneness of God, without any partners, sons, or daughters. This oneness of God in its complete essence, preached by all prophets, was later distorted by some segments of humanity in naming these distortions as religions. They left the worship of one true God and replaced it with worshipping humans, cows, and fire. To purify humanity, God sent his last prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a guide for all mankind and through him revealed in his last message, the Quran. The Jews made their rabbis lords instead of Allah, as did the Christians with their monks, by allowing them to permit what Allah had forbidden them and forbidding what Allah had allowed for them. And the Christians made the Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, a God next to Allah. As well as Uzair and Jesus the son of Mary, to worship him alone, and not to associate anything with him. He, glory be to him, is the only God and there is nothing worthy of worship except him. He is, glory be to him, sacred, far above having any partner that these idolaters and others claim. At Taba, 31. This utmost obedience and worship to one God, in its truest sense forms the basis of Islam. The entire Quran has been committed to memory by millions of Muslims around the world and preserved by God himself from any interpolations, unlike previous scriptures. To provide guidance for all ages. What does Islam teach? Islam calls humanity to the service of the one, omnipotent creator, Allah in Arabic. Islam teaches the oneness of mankind in the eyes of God regardless of superficial differences such as race and nationality. In Islam there is no superiority of whites over blacks or vice versa. Anything that disrupts society's harmony and deviates humans from worshipping one true God is disliked in Islam. Thus Islam recognizes the evils of alcohol, drugs, premarital sex, gambling etc. and advises humans to stay sway from these Satan's handiwork. Islam further provides detailed instruction about a person's relationship with God, with his family, and the society. Thus no aspect of a person's life is outside of the guidance provided by God. Born Sinless Islam teaches that every child is born sinless with a pure heart and an inner instinct to realize the oneness of God. It is the parents or the environment that deviates this child to associate partners with God, in the form of multiple gods, or to reject God altogether. No Mediator There is no mediator between God and man. There is no need of one, for God, the All-Knowing, can listen and answer our sincere prayers regardless of our state and place. Salvation comes through submitting to the pure belief in one God and following His guidance as revealed in the Quran, and not through the vicarious sacrifice, murder, of an innocent human being. Thus Islam is a rational religion based on justice and self-accountability, and not on unjust and mysterious doctrines formulated by humans. Islam provides solutions to all the ills plaguing humanity. An example of Islam's stand on racial justice is provided below. Islam dispels races. One person's superiority over another is not based on his race, economic status or nationality but on his God-consciousness and purity of character. God proclaims in the Quran. O people! Indeed! I have created you from one male, your father Adam, and one female, your mother Eve. 
Therefore, your lineage is the same, so some of you should not take pride in lineage over others. Then, I made you into many nations and dispersed tribes, so that you may recognize one another, not so that you take pride in them, because pride can only be due to Allah consciousness. Indeed, the most noble from among you according to Allah is the one who is most mindful of him. Indeed, Allah is aware of your conditions, knowing of what levels of perfection and efficiency you are on, nothing is hidden from him. Al-Hujrat, 13 Likewise Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, proclaimed. No Arab has any superiority over a non-Arab, nor does a non-Arab have any superiority over a black man, or the black man any superiority over the white man. You are all the children of Adam, and Adam was created from clay. After studying Islam, Malcolm X became a true Muslim. He remarks, America needs to understand Islam, because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. The Quran was revealed in the Arabic language, but translations of its meaning are available in English and other languages for non-Arabs. Likewise Islam is not restricted to people of the East or Arabs, it is a universal religion revealed for all of mankind. We invite all sincere humans to study Islam with an unbiased mind. Don't blindly follow the whims and paganistic influences of the environment around us. God bestowed upon us this superb mind to seek and live the truth, for we all will be accountable on the day of judgment for our beliefs and deeds. Don't delay your salvation. Welcome to Islam. Christmas in Islam. Quite a number of Muslims today, especially those living in Christian-dominated countries or those influenced to a large degree by Western culture, have been led to consider that taking part in the Christmas celebrations of friends and relatives is, at very least, a harmless pastime if not a legitimate source of pleasure for children and adults alike. In many instances, pressure to conform with the practices of society is too great for those of weak resolve to withstand. Parents are often tempted to give in to the pleading of children who have been invited to a party or who are unable to understand why they alone are being prevented from joining the festivities they observe all around them or why they cannot receive gifts on this occasion like the other children. Indeed, the Christmas season has been aggressively promoted in every aspect of business, in schools, in every public place. High-pressure sales tactics have invaded the home through television, radio, magazine and newspaper. Captivating the imagination with every kind of attraction day and night for a month or more every year. Little wonder that many of those thus targeted so persistently succumb to temptation. Among earlier generations, Christmas was an occasion which was still basically religious in orientation. Gifts, trees, decorations and feasting assumed lesser roles. But now all of this has changed. As noted in an American publication, Christmas has gone the way of many other aspects of society. Becoming one more element in the mass culture which every season enables manufacturers and merchants to make millions of dollars through an elaborate system of gift exchange which comes more often from mutual expectations that must be fulfilled than from the heart. The commonly accepted notion that happiness is derived largely from possessions and entertainment is the driving force behind the month-long preparations and festivities which continue on through the End of the year. This fact, although blameworthy in itself, has led many Muslims into the delusion that Christmas is no longer a religious occasion and therefore does not conflict with Islamic belief. The materialistic atmosphere surrounding the celebration of Christmas is, in reality, a manifestation of pagan culture, jahiliya, at its worst. It can only be seen by the conscious Muslim believer as a rat race designed and implemented by shaitan to accomplish a great waste of time, effort money and resources while countless families barely subsist in a state of poverty throughout many areas of the world. In addition to the commercial side of Christmas, although less obvious to the casual observer, are certain religious aspects to be noted. The celebration was and still is intended by practicing Christians as a remembrance of the birth of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, who is considered by many of them as God incarnate or the second person in a trinity, and thus they celebrate the birth of divinity. The word itself is an abbreviated form of Christ Mass, i.e., sacrament and commemoration of Christ. Although taken by Christians to be the birthday of Jesus, the actual date of celebration, December 25, cannot be traced back any further than the 4th century after Christ. 
Ironically, this day is also considered to be the birthday of the Hindu god, Krishna, as well as Mitra, the Greek god of light. It also coincides with the annual tree festival which had long been celebrated in Northern Europe before the Christian era and which has been recently revived in some Arab countries in an attempt to encourage celebration by disguising the religious significance of the day. The Christmas tree is the most obvious aspect of that pagan celebration which was incorporated along with its date of observance, December 25th, into church rites. The evergreen tree, because it keeps its green needles throughout the winter months, was believed by pre-Christian pagans to have special powers of protection against the forces of nature and evil spirits. The end of December marked the onset of a visible lengthening of daylight hours, the return of warmth and light and defeat of those evil forces of cold and darkness. At a particular stage of its development, the Church is known to have adopted certain of the popular pagan practices into Christianity for political or social reasons. Thus, in more aspects than one, the holiday is deeply rooted in the worship of different forms of creation rather than the Creator Himself. A Muslim cannot possibly approve of such beliefs or the practices which stem from them. Anyone with a minimal knowledge of Islam would surely reject kafir, disbelief, and shirk, association of partners with Allah, in every form. Only through ignorance or unawareness could one continue to participate in activities that reflect the acceptance of both. Muslims must be firm in refusal of all which is contrary to the concept of la ilaha illallah, there is none deserving of subservience except Allah alone. Consideration for others is well and good on the condition that Islamic principles are not compromised. Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, says. If you, O Messenger, supposedly followed most of the people on earth, they would mislead you from Allah's religion. Allah's custom has always been that the truth is with the minority. Most people follow nothing but speculation that has no basis and they think that those whom they worship will bring them close to Allah, whereas they are completely wrong in believing this. An AM 6 116. And he commands. 3. Follow, O people, the scripture which your Lord revealed to you, and the traditions of your prophet. Do not follow the desires of those you imagine to be friends and protectors amongst the devils or evil scholars, turning to them and leaving what was revealed to you because of your desires. How little you remember. If you had remembered, you would not have preferred falsehood over the truth, and you would have followed what your messenger came with, acting in obedience to it and leaving anything besides it. Araf 7 colon 3 Although some, in all honesty, admit their weakness in the face of continual social pressure. Others defend their participation by the strange assertion that they observe the occasion through regard for Jesus, ISA, a prophet of Islam. If such an observance, with its semblance of Islamic atmosphere, is invalid for Prophet Muhammad, how then can it reasonably be valid for other prophets who neither observed nor encouraged such practices, which were later devised by those who abandoned prophetic teachings for their own inclinations and preferences? O Messenger, look at the one who followed his desires and made it like his God he cannot oppose, then Allah led him astray despite his knowledge, because he deserved to be misguided. And Allah sealed his heart so he cannot listen in a manner that benefits, and Allah put a veil on his eyes which stops him from seeing the truth. So who can enable him to the truth after Allah has led him astray? Do you not remember the harm of following desires and the benefit of following Allah's sacred law? Jethiah 45,23 Again, the Muslim is reminded of the hadiths in which the Prophet, Saws, warned against imitating the non-believers and encouraged distinguishing oneself from them in dress and manner. Whether taken from the materialistic or the religious standpoint, Christmas can have no place in the Muslim's heart nor in his home. Any Muslim, young or old, who has a secure place in an Islamic community or group which has regular activities and affords companionship will find little difficulty in rejecting that which is harmful to himself and his family, in spite of the apparent attractions. In some societies, refusal and resistance may require actual jihad. But those who seek the acceptance of Allah and fear Him will undertake the task with knowledge that they are striving for salvation and will thus be firm and resolute. For Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, calls to believers. O oh, those who have faith in Allah and act according to what He has legislated for them. Put up a barrier for yourselves and your families against a huge fire which is stoked with people and stones. Appointed over this fire are tough angels who are harsh to whoever enters it. They do not disobey the command of Allah when He commands them, and they do whatever He commands them to do without hesitation or showing weakness. Tareem 66 6
and in the avoidance of hellfire lies paradise.yy.